Hi, and welcome to the supercharged tutorial series on mastering Airtable as a CRM tool. Just in a few minutes, you'll be automating and organizing your business contacts like never before. We'll dive into four powerful steps. Crafting a CRM base to catch all of those incoming emails and interactions, then effortlessly replying with Airtable and ChatGPT, then generating cold emails from templates using ChatGPT, as well as finally sending emails directly from your Airtable with just a simple press of the button. Stay tuned and let's get started. Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated and in this video I will show you how you can use Airtable as your CRM and how, how this is structured and how you could use it to facilitate your business. So this is a sort of a typical CRM with um, the, all the important fields. It is actually based off one of the Airtable templates, but I have added here a couple of additional things to track the interaction as well as to have replies based on chat GPT as well as at cold emails and so on. So I'll just walk you quickly through what are the stages here. Uh, so the first page, this is sort of the, the key page when you are tracking all your opportunities and the deals and so on. Then the second part is, which I find always very important, is tracking of the interactions with the individual contacts. So you will see later that there are contacts and there are also accounts. Um, and on this interaction table, you will see that there are different types of interaction. And this is designed this way that either you can be filling out this yourself whenever you are talking with someone or calling someone and so on, but you can also use a form to have this entered by your team members. So you can see here that this is a, for example, uh, interaction form. You could use this, you know, for a specific contact that you have on the list, whenever the interaction was happening, what was the type of interaction and the notes. You could use this either with your internal team members just to give them an easier interface, or you could also use this with external team members. So for example, when you have multiple contacts over here, those contacts can have different owners. So here at the end, you will see that each of those contacts have a specific person that is responsible for them. So this is people that are coming here from your team members. So it can be, this is me, this could be other people and so on. So when you come back to contacts, we also have a specified view for a specific team members, which is then later converted into a share view. So share view means that this person doesn't need to have access to Airtable. So once you open this link, it will basically give them a view like this. These are all the contacts that they are supposed to be reaching out to. And here, based on this view on whatever record you decide to show, so you don't have to show everything, and you are also showing a subset of customers, so you're not showing everything. And you can tell them, for example, okay, so these are your contacts, uh, call each one of them, and then once you're calling them, click on the link that will open that dedicated form. This is already linked to that customer, so it's a little bit easier, and type what were the results. Or if you were sending them some sort of chat message, send what were the type here what were the results, submit that interaction. Okay, and then you can submit another response or you can go back over here. So as you will see, whoever we contact over here, this is sorted based on whenever was that person last contacted. So once we contact that person, that person would go to the bottom of the list. So you can see that the Wolf Motors went all the way because the contact was, this is the date when that person was contacted last time. So this way you can give them an easy way how to kind of process through the list. So this is one way how you can sort of track those interactions. And then when you come back over here, you will see always what were the, the latest conversations. You can also have it grouped by customer. So that's another way so that you can find a specific customer and see like, okay, so what was the conversation history with a given given customer and so on. So that's one way of doing that. And what I have also included over here are inbound emails. So you might be using either your email or you can be using a general info email and you can have all those information coming in here in a specific row. So you will see that here we have the notes for them for the email so actually we have subject later let's move subject here so we have the subject and we have the 
notes like what were the notes from the email so this is actually email that came in then who it was sent to so this was sent to my email if there are any people in CC this would be visible as well you can also see that this particular email has attachment and here we are actually having a direct link to that email I am actually using two different Gmail accounts, so I have created a second link which basically links the Gmail account number two. It's just a simple formula that changes it over. So you will see once I click on it, it actually opens that email so that you can take a look at that email. If you didn't understand something, you can reply from here. But what we will be using this for here is we will be using the reply view. And then on the reply view, we will integrate replies from ChatGPT to automatically create replies to specific emails. So this will be in the next part of the video. You will be able to find the links to that uh, parts of the video in the description uh, below. Uh, yeah, but let's start with that first stage. How does this email shows up inside of Airtable? So for that uh, email to be here we're using a scenario using tool called make.com make helps you connect different apps to one another that means also Airtable and multiple other systems it works fantastically with Airtable so you can sign in and test it for free with a couple of scenarios and some free monthly operation and once you start that the next step would be to basically create a new scenario and I will show you how this scenario is built and I'll walk you through step by step. If you would like, you can also download the blueprint to this scenario and then import this as well as other blueprints to this whole base and, and so on. But let me start going step by step to explain what this scenario does and what are the steps involved here. So the first module on the list is Gmail watch emails. And once you open this, it basically connects to your Gmail account. So this should be Google Workspace account that you can also connect Gmail three accounts, but it gets a little bit more difficult. So here you would have to select what folder this one is checking. In our case, it's just everything that goes to the inbox. But we have added a specific a specific filter since I have uh, emails from multiple businesses coming into this. I'm only asking for emails that are to Greg at Business Automated for this particular business. And every time I'm every time when this scenario runs and it runs every five minutes, it checks for five, five emails. It doesn't have to be five, can be honestly 20. Uh, I don't know what's the higher level, but the main purpose is just to avoid kind of a longer timeout. So you can kind of play, play with it and test what works. 20, 100 should be safe. Now, the next step is that here we don't want every single email coming in. So you can see here, exclude emails and we are excluding a couple of emails. So, for example, we are excluding domain. So if there is a, any domain that would be, for example, like this type of domain. So email does not contain this. So if there will be another domain, for example, make.com, we would do this this and we will do at make.com that excludes everyone from the domain so you have to be careful unless if there is absolutely no one that will contact you from there you can use it otherwise you know maybe from make maybe you want to have some sort of customer service and so on so you don't necessarily need to add that but you could add a specific email here for example info at make.com so this way you are excluding specific emails, separate them by comma and so on. Now it does a check inside of Airtable. So it checks inside of our database. You have to add the connection to Airtable. And then inside of the contacts table, it does a simple check whether that email already exists. And after that, we actually added a second type of check. So this is, let's go back here. As you will see, you can mark the type of the email. So you can say whether this is customer or certain emails, if you're, for example, not interested, you can also mark them here as do not capture, or you can also mark them as spam, whatever reason, like maybe this is not spam, but you just don't want 
emails from this person coming in in Airtable, it might be easier to exclude some people here rather than going back into into make every time and adjusting those filters. So it kind of gives you two options. So if someone is marked as spam, this will not continue. If someone is marked as do not capture, this will also not continue. So this kind of excludes um, those emails. And now the check that happens is if the customer exists. So if we have found ID over here, we continue and we would create an interaction over here. Interaction means we would create a record of that email. And you can see what we are adding over here. So inside of the interaction field, and we're marking the type of the email as an inbound. As a date and time, we are using the date and time from from here so you know you click on this this would show up and the next step is the record id because we have found that contact so the record id is coming from this step and then for the text notes we are adding the text notes context from here so you will see that here you have html content and here you have text content so we don't want uh, HTML, it's going to be difficult to read, so we're just using the regular text content. You can also see the subject, so here also you can, you know, you can also do the drag and drop over here, so you can drop subject over here. Now, here we are having a, a little bit of a, a strange or long looking formula because what it does is it takes the recipient, and because the recipient is an array, array means like a list with multiple items inside we're using this formula map on on two this is the same uh, this is this area just changed it it didn't change the name it, it shows the short name you can see the raw name that's what shows up exactly here Airtable is just making it look a little bit nicer uh, so what we are taking here from this array we want to get this email address and you can see that the raw email address name is address so that's why we're mapping and what this map function will do is it will return array with a simple emails inside without this this structure without the recipient name and so on so it will be just a list only with email addresses and then we're using the joint formula to kind of combine this into a simple line of text and uh, we are just using this as comma as a as a separator and the same thing we're doing with the CC. So we are also adding people on CC just to know if there was someone on the CC or not. And then we're adding the message ID just for, for tracking message link. This is something that is also visible here. And then finally, we have uh, here a confirmation whether there is an attachment. This is also a formula that checks whether the length of attachments and attachment that's also a list so whether this list if has if it has no items inside it will be zero if it's bigger than zero then means there's attachment otherwise we ignore that field so this is the setup for that particular field and that's how the email gets created and in case the customer does not exist we would follow that route here and create customer and creating customers rather simple here we say send their name and then email address and that's pretty much all the information that we'll get from a new email the rest of the information about the customer you would have to add yourself uh, manually okay so once this is created we pretty much copy pasted that module over there and we do exactly the same the only thing is that we take that ID not from here but from the module number five create contact number five so this is where it is bam we end up over here and the next step would be scheduling this scenario how frequently would you like it to check for new emails 15 minutes 15 minutes seems to be fine you could do it every one hour and so on so once you set it up you save it you turn it on turn on the scheduling and now every email that would come into your inbox that matches those criteria will show up over here and then you can start using this in the second part over here this will be the here this is sorted by the newest email you can see that there is a project request from here we will continue replying 
to this email, but in this case using chat GPT and templates for reply. So this is something that we'll touch on on the second video. So you can see the link to that video in the description. And yeah, that's everything for now. Let me know in the comments what you think and what you like about this. And please subscribe if you want to see the next video. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Thank you.